Hi, everybody. Um, today I have with me a friend and colleague, Alina Kislenko. Alina is an assistant clinical professor, adjunct professor, um, and a psychotherapist specializing in neurodiversity, giftedness, and psychopathy. Alina, could you tell people a little bit more about who you are, what you do, what interests you? Uh, yes. So uh, I started kind of uh, researching and working with, uh, we have kind of the first counseling center in the world that specialize in ADHD and autism with all our practitioners being ADHD and autistic ourselves, the ADHD and Spectrum Center. And through researching autism, I got into researching areas of polymathy genius because there's so much overlap with ADHD and autism and um, different levels of in different kinds of really unique intelligence. And yeah, and so then today I know we want to talk a bit about humility, uh, humility and intelligence because definitely in autism and ADHD and, and working with more polymathic people, there's a lot of issues with humility. <laughs> Absolutely. This was something I heard a lot from the people I interviewed for my doctoral research of like, well, navigating things socially is really a challenge when you're a highly capable, gifted, polymathic person, like what story do you tell to who like there are landmines you might step in someone might not want to hear you say the truth of your background they may think you're boasting or bragging or trying to make someone feel less than who doesn't have that same kind of background uh, or that you're just plain lying like there's a lot of fear around how people will perceive you telling the truth of who you are and what you've done and what you know and what you're capable of and, exactly. and and there's, can you speak a little bit about how you think society impact, like how society sort of messages us about being humble, how humility is a good thing we're told? Yes, we get so much messaging. Some of it comes from a religious place, uh, but generally a lot of messaging that, um, you know, don't stick out, don't think you're special, don't, um, even like the people who raise their hands a lot in class, it's like, oh, don't be a keener, you know, and coolness is all about being um, aloof and not really caring about life and not really trying hard. And it's this culture that in some ways is actually psychopathic. Like in my research on psychopathy, I'm like, wow, the culture of coolness is exactly the same as the culture of of like how psychopaths are, where they're uncaring and unfeeling and uh, talking behind people's backs and not really genuine um, and just lying if needed to whatever. Um, and that lying is cool and, and not having genuine connection. So in this kind of more psychopathic culture that we're in, you know, if someone's good at something, um, we really suppress it, especially in women, you know, um, we really play it down. There's so, so, so there's some gender elements. Um, but then also it, it, when it comes up, for example, with things like autism, the problem is often we're, we're really bad at a lot of things that culture says are important, you know, in ableism rules, like, you have to be, you know, able-bodied or you're going to slow everyone down, you know, or you have to be a good at social skills or, you know, they don't want you there when we have our own neurodivergent social skills. Um, so similarly, if, if we're kind of failing in a lot of areas of what society thinks is cool, but then we're good at something, there's also not that space to be like, hey, I'm really good at this or I'm good at multiple things because um, then now you're boasting, but then society's treating you badly for the things they very clearly see you're bad at. And so, you know, we all have to be our own little PR agent and figure out, you know, what do we communicate so we can get into partnerships with people so people can know our skills, so they can ask for our help, so we can, you know, support others. And um, yeah, so I know for my own learning about my myself and my own skills, it was delayed by like 15 years because I had to get through so many self-esteem issues of, you know, don't stick out, don't bring up what you're good at, don't, you know, and, and so my own journey helped me with my clients' journeys to figure out how can they really learn to shine? Because what was happening was when people, especially polymaths, have a lot of things they're really strong at and they feel really limited and shining, um, they tend to get really depressed and possibly suicidal. And like suicide is a huge problem amongst um, really like people with a lot of different intelligence areas that society doesn't really value, especially, or if they feel, even if society values it, that it's suppressed. So like, for example, society might value like someone who has math skills and then we celebrate that skill set, but someone who's really good at knitting, you know, because maybe it's not as like sexy or cool a thing might just die on the vine because nobody really nurtured that. 
you know, because we prioritize intelligence and society in different ways. And the whole thing with polymathy is there's so much different, like as you get into one level of expertise, it branches off to another level. And in the end of the day, a lot of polymaths have really cool perspectives on the world that come from like being a mechanic and a baker and a lawyer and, you know, an astronaut. And from there, they can see unique things in the world others can't that, you know, you need a lot of confidence to be able to share. And that's the opposite of humility. Yeah. I want to be vulnerable for a minute, if it's okay with you and share part of my challenges on this regard, because I consider myself a polymathic kind of gal and I've done some cool things and professionally and academically and it's always so hard for me to know like what is okay for me to share with whom who will hate me for telling the truth and who will think it's cool (laughs) and it's also juxtaposed with my values like I value honesty truth I and I care about the intention behind my words like I may say something and my intention is just to state the facts or it's relevant to the conversation, so I'm explaining it for context. And someone may assume that my intent was to put them down, and that was not at all my intent. They're making assumptions about my intentions. Um, I believe in being pretty transparent. Like, I'm pretty, I, I preach authenticity. So to me, it would be inauthentic to not be authentic and practice that myself. And so... I almost feel like I have to hide things like, well, I was a White House intern and I worked for a few presidents and a governor and I'm an academic doctor. Like if I say the facts of my background, I don't know if it's hit or miss. Some people will think that's amazing. Tell me more how cool. And some people will go that like, who does she think she is? Yeah, And I'm just stating the facts of my back. In fact, that was how we met, Alina. This Mm -hmm. is such a relevant conversation with you because we were kind of in the same Facebook circles having to do with polymathy and genius. And we friended each other, but we hadn't spoken. We just were like, okay, I'll be a Facebook friend to you. And then I posted something one day that was basically like, man, I'm so tired of having to walk on eggshells about the facts of my past and then you were like wow how refreshing and then we were like let's jam let's talk let's be friends because you and I are both young professionals who achieved a lot like in a real like you you're still in your 30s right Mm -hmm. I'm in my early 40s I'm 42 and you know I was a doctor in my 30s I had achieved a lot like you know I worked and it, it wasn't luck it wasn't on a silver platter here have these things I worked my off you know like I worked hard to achieve the things I had achieved relatively young in life and you had achieved so much pretty quickly in life like by early 20s you were a business owner and you've done some really cool stuff you have one of you know you have the largest ADHD related Mm -hmm. Facebook community with a million people in it like Mm -hmm. you've done amazing things and I just love when we talk and we can just both be ourselves without the walking on eggshells part. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. And yeah, exactly. I love the meeting story because that was, I was just like, yes, because I think you were saying like, Hey, as I just talk about my life, I just sometimes lose friends or people think I'm putting them down instead of that. You're telling like, this is who I am. And as my friend, let's like, feel free. Let's connect around these things. If you need help around these things, I'm good at this. You know, you're great at this. Let's, you know, we should know each other's talents. We should know what each other has done. And and we need to all talk about it. And I don't like this humility culture. Um, like I've seen, and, and it can, like, it, it just deteriorates people's self-esteem by a lot. And it's really hard to fix. Because like, for example, um, like I had um, a friend and they were like the top, body painter in the world okay and they would always be like oh you know but I I don't feel very good or the people in my well my family when I was younger told me not to try to be special so I don't really like talking about my talent and I'm like oh my goodness let's get this out there let's you know you're so you're so skilled you won all these competitions like this is spectacular and um 
And, and it was just so hard for them because they were like, no, no, I like, I don't want to stick out. People will be mad at me if I'm too good at anything. And I've seen this repeatedly a million times. And I think we've, we've robbed the world of these just brilliant rocket scientists and brilliant, like people who can make, um, you know, new materials out of nothing and people who can make the most amazing foods and paint the most amazing portraits because they're just crippled or, I mean, like emotionally like disabled in to, to not be able to think or feel anything towards areas of strength and then their whole world is actually then becomes what they're bad at because everyone who tends to be really good at a lot of stuff most of the time they're spectacularly bad at a lot of day-to-day -day stuff so if they're not appreciating what they are really strong at and their areas of expertise and nurturing that and the people around them aren't nurturing it then they're often just focusing on the fact that maybe they can't drive and they can't, you know, um, you know, make friends or they can't, um, you know, cook very well or whatever. Right. Like, and that becomes their whole life. If, if for those people that are really multi-skilled, if you're not focusing on their skills, it's just a life of, you know, their horrible weaknesses that they just have to stare at all day long. So that, and that leads to a lot of really smart people to kill themselves, like seriously. So that's what I have found and, and what I, really fight for because it's it's just the saddest stories of all these da Vinci's that could have been that that never were exactly like I think about all the human talent that goes to waste because of the peer pressure to stay small everybody get in your cage everybody do what you're told nobody stand out nobody be excellent because then other people who are not putting the effort in or can't be exceptional and excellent might be insecure so let's just make all the people who are unwilling to put in the work comfortable by me meeting the level that they're at. And so it drives all of us down to yes. the lowest common denominator. And that's foolish, especially when humanity is facing so many very significant problems. We need creativity. We need innovation. We need solutions. And so this peer pressure to be humble. And let's talk about the word for a minute. Mm -hmm. Humble. It's related. Hume. Okay humility is related to the word humiliate so how is it that humility is good but humiliating someone is bad i i think when you act humble to people please you engage in humiliating yourself you humiliate yourself by denying the truth of who you are and your your light your capacity well said. you're so so right like it's just um, that's what I've seen in people who, when you can't, when they, other people shut them down when they're like just learning the skills or showing, oh, hey, I think I learned this. Do you want to see or whatever? And they're shut down. Those people live this life really humiliated, embarrassed by their own selves, you know, and, and like, and, and the people who are more brought up are the people who are really good schmoozers, you know, the ones who can practice the right humility and be glib and be um, really suave, um, we see those as, oh, they're non-threatening, but then they are actually not skilled and they're not often able to do what they're, what they say they're able to do in their special humility way. So essentially what we're doing, because we've broken people sharing their true gifts and celebrating that in society, um, like we used to more, you know, like in the Renaissance, we were like, wow, this person's an amazing painter. Who else is amazing at what they're doing? You know, it was a real exploration of who's amazing at what, you know, now there's a lot more of suppressing. And then you just get these people that are really skilled at faking humility that get out there and make everyone non-threatened. And they're in these high level roles that are harming society and they don't have the skills for and that's what we've done to ourselves um and uh yeah I think it's like something we need to really think about what do you think is the solution Angela well I want to before I dive into what I think the solution is and that's a great question the kind of fakery you just described where I'm going to modify me to do what I want to influence you, it's manipulative by definition. Yeah. It's not transparent. It's not truthful. It's unethical by nature to uh, maneuver social interactions to your benefit by withholding certain information. And I get that that's also strategic, but there's just an element of this, at the lack of truthfulness in humility that I just don't feel comfortable with. Now, I, in terms of what the solution is, I think it's important to know your audience, right? Like to know what's relevant to try to remember, have you said it before? I know I struggle with that where I'm like, I'm talking to people all day and sometimes I don't store who I told what 
because I've told the story so many times to different people. So I sometimes don't remember I've told someone something before. And if I say it again, and it's about an accomplishment I've done, then they think I'm bragging. And I'm like, hey, buddy, sorry, I didn't store that in my memory because I have so much else going on. Yes. Um, the th- other thing too, I like to do is every once in a while, I'll get that twinge of jealousy. I'll get a twinge of jealousy and I'll notice it. I'll feel it. And I'll feel so uncomfortable that I'm feeling it because I don't want to feel jealousy. And I will override that initial sensation with my own logic and my own good intentions. I I believe in karma. What goes around comes around. What you reap, you sow. And I try to wish the best for others, even my competitors, even people that could be seen as my competitors. I try to wish them well on their journey and for them to have all the successes they deserve. Some people deserve success. Some people don't, you know, that's their own journey. Um, So I think it's important when you feel that you want someone else to be humble. Why would you want someone else to stay small so you could feel better? No. Wish other people to reach their best selves and even if they're imperfect and even if you know their delivery isn't perfect okay whatever i so i think part of the solution is this mind frame switch we all should engage in which is to be happy for other people who are successful rather than seeing it as a personal offense that someone else is doing well in their life like i don't want to spread that kind of ill will i don't i won't do it it's like, it's like, as if any of us rise, we all rise, you know, and, and ha- cultivating that I think is the opposite of currently what we're in a lot, like kind of idiocracy. There was this movie years ago that was kind of about how a society that just hated intelligence or hated anyone who was skilled at anything. And, um, and it, and it just led to all these problems happening because nobody who was good at stuff was actually in charge of that stuff. And um, it was instead just everyone being like, the most like as as dumb as they could be and that was rewarded and unskilled and that kind of thing so I think where when like I when I feel that jealousy I love that you brought that up because definitely I'll feel that jealousy or envy and for me it's more like an arrow that shows oh cool I want to develop myself in that way sometime soon like that helps me know that that's a priority that I'd like to work towards and and just gives me a goal and then also know, now that I know that I've been around this person who has this thing, this skill, I, I know that now, oh, and I have someone maybe to, to, like someone in my circle or someone I'm around at some point that I can ask them for help if, if I've prioritized that in my life. Like, how lucky am I? So like a completely different paradigm to like, oh, I'm jealous. I now have to hide it. And I'm little, I'm, I'm smaller every time that person's around, but instead, oh, thank gosh, they, they help. They have, thank God they helped me, um, like figure out an aim for my life. Like that's like maybe my next goal for the next year or my next, you know, thing I'd be really excited about or proud of myself. And I have this person to maybe ask about it and maybe help me and, 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 and speed up my growth in that by like months and or weeks in, into that by telling me what's really important to get there, you know? Exactly. As a, take it as a learning opportunity. The other thing that I should not say, I just, I'm, I love to be honest. Right. And I, I, I'm willing to say things that will be perceived potentially with judgment from others, but I value the truth enough that I'm just willing to say it. And if people don't like me, cause I said it, well, that's up to them. But whenever I have sensed, and it's normally from fe- other females that I get this, mm-hmm. whenever I have sensed some hostility and aggression at me because I'm doing well, it just makes, it makes me feel sad for that person. And I just feel like I really wish they would focus on themselves rather than making me the target of their frustrations, maybe take that, those feelings and use them as fuel to work on themselves. And by the way, I cannot tell you how much, and this is another, it's probably going to sound like I'm bragging, but I'm just stating the truth. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) I worked really hard you know, academically, I became a doctor, an academic doctor, a fake doctor. Okay. And then, you know, I worked hard in my profession, in my career, and I still do. I'm an overachiever. I'm a recovering overachiever. That was my trauma response. Work really hard. Right. Um, But I also worked equally as if maybe even more on my emotional world. I worked, oh God, I've been in so much therapy since I was a kid. 
Um, I've gone to so many workshops, seminars, conference, classes, retreats. I've done so much to work on myself. Um, and I, I wish more people would put in that kind of effort to work on their personhood, not just their education or their profession. All right. We'll, st we're still recording. We've lost Alina. So you know what? I, um, I know we need to wrap up anyway. I'm so sorry to end this way. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope this conversation on polymathy and humility is interesting to you. Um, and helpful. I'm trying to think if there's any other final thoughts I've got. One final tip I'll say is, yeah, know your audience. You know, sometimes we may have to censor and edit, and, you know, give messages to our audience, which are appropriate based on who's listening. And that, that requires personal judgment calls. But I want to encourage you all to not just buy this idea that it's important and appropriate and good to be humble to play small, to pretend to be something different than what all that you really are. It is okay to be yourself and it is okay to thrive and you don't have to play small to make other people feel comfortable, but know your audience, right? All right, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you later. Bye.